Hi, welcome to Animation Recap Center. Some astronauts traveled to space in a spaceship in the 1970s. They spend a lot of time sleeping in hibernation chamber, but suddenly they reach an unknown, mysterious planet. According to their time, they are away from Earth for 18 months. But as for Earth, they have spent about 2,000 years. On that unknown planet, they notice some strange things. Here, well-dressed apes treat humans like animals. Some apes then decide to perform brain surgery on the astronauts to gather more information about the ancient humans. Astronauts understand that this is our world. But, in the last 2,000 years, the world has changed, where apes have become as intelligent as humans through evolution. Today, we will recap the story of an amazing movie called, Planet of the Apes. So, without further ado, let's start with the recap. Astronaut George Taylor is making an audio report aboard a spaceship. He says he and his crew have been floating in deep space for more than six months. But, because they were traveling at light speed, 700 years have passed back on Earth. They are now getting ready to head back to Earth. He says he has no regrets about leaving Earth for such a long time, and understands that the people who sent him up here are now long gone. He sends messages to the people of the Earth that human existence is nothing compared to this vast universe. Still, people are fighting among themselves. He admits that observing the boundless deep space squashes the ego of a man. He then wonders if back on Earth people are still waging war against each other and keeping the children of their neighbors hungry and themselves well fed. He gets up and checks on his crew who are all in hibernation. There is Dodge, Landon, and a woman named Stuart. He lays down for hibernation himself. Then a couple of months passed. Suddenly, their spaceship enters a planet and crash lands into a sea. The crash wakes up the astronauts. They have all grown beards except for Stuart, whose hibernation chamber leaked while they were asleep because of which she aged and died. Water starts seeping into the ship, and Taylor tells Dodge to read the atmosphere and see if they can safely get out. He also asks Landon to send a final signal back to Earth. But Landon says that the ship is dead and no signal will get out. Dodge reports that the air is safe to breathe and Taylor says they need to abandon ship. Before getting out, Taylor notices the ship's Earth clock and the three survivors read the ship's chronometer as November 25, 3978. 2006 years after their departure in 1972. They all get out of the ship into an emergency raft with their belongings. They row around for a while debating where they are. Taylor estimates they are on a planet in the Orion constellation. But Landon figures out that Taylor is not sure. They reach ashore, take stock of their belongings and realize that they only have three days worth of food and water. Taylor tells Landon that he saw the Earth clock before leaving, and 2,000 years have passed back on their home planet. But Landon isn't entirely convinced. Meanwhile, Dodge runs some tests on the soil and says that it will not support any kind of vegetation because the rocky soil here is rich in excessive nitrogen and sulfate salts. Taylor says they only have three days to find life on this planet if there is any. They set out and explore the strange rocky formations for a long time, avoiding landslides and such. Meanwhile, Taylor and Landon discuss why they all decided to take this journey. Taylor says Landon came because he wanted the glory, and they both agree that Dodge came due to his passion for knowledge. However, when Landon asserts that Taylor came because he despised the people back on Earth, and he is running from them, Taylor disagrees. He says he simply came because he believes there has to be some life better than man in the universe. Finally, after walking a long time they find a plant in the ground and realize where there is one there must be another. As they continue their search, shadows start appearing hidden from them in the rocks. They are being followed. The three astronauts come across scarecrow-like structures. The explorers were astonished to see such unusual things. But, as they go up to examine them, they spot waterfalls and greenery. Excited, they take off their clothes and jump into the water. While playing around, Landon notices footprints in the mud. Just then, their clothes and equipment are stolen by unknown creatures. They run after the creatures by following the trail of their torn clothes and broken equipment left behind by them. Finally, they come to a clearing and find that the creatures actually look like humans. However, the humans cannot speak and appear to be feral. Taylor says this is good because they will easily rule over these primitive people. But just then, they hear an ominous sound and all the feral humans start running. Sensing danger, the three astronauts start running as well. Soon after, armed gorillas raid the cornfield where the humans are gathering food. Horses appear and gunshots are fired, but Taylor is shocked to see that riding the horses are apes who are dressed in very proper clothes. The apes are shooting and capturing the humans in nets. During the chase, Dodge is shot and killed by the apes, and Landon is captured. Meanwhile, Taylor is still running but just as it looks like he has gotten away, he gets shot in the throat and captured. 
the apes are seen handling the humans like animals. Just before Taylor passes out in a carriage, he notices the apes posing for a photo over the humans they have caught and killed, while the photographer ape says, smile. Taylor was unable to speak due to the injury to his throat. Taylor wakes up and finds he is being operated on in a cage by an ape doctor. Another ape, named Dr. Zira, arrives to see him, because she is interested in the odd clothes he was wearing. The conversation between the two doctors reveals that they are animal doctors, and humans are considered lowly animals on this planet. The next day, when Zira visits humans for a routine checkup, Taylor tries hard to talk to Jira, but he can't do it due to a neck injury. Next, Taylor is in a cage outside, when Zira and her fiancé, Cornelius, who is an archaeologist come to see him. Again, Taylor tries hard to speak, but he is unable. Taylor writes in the sand to show Zira, but just then Dr. Zayas arrives and her attention is diverted. For an unknown reason, Dr. Zayas is very strict about humans. Meanwhile, another human in the cage erases the writing and a fight breaks out between him and Taylor. Taylor is taken inside, and as Dr. Zayas is walking back, he notices the writing in the sand. He erases the writing with his stick. Back in the cage, Taylor finally manages to steal Zira's writing pad and writes his name to prove to her that he is intelligent. Although it was against the law to take humans out of the prison, Zira takes Taylor home, where Taylor writes his whole story out for Zira and Cornelius to read. Cornelius does not believe it, and thinks it is some kind of clever animal trick. He says Taylor could not have flown into the planet because flight is impossible. Taylor proves him wrong by making a paper plane. Taylor shows them on a map where his ship landed, and Cornelius says that region is called the Forbidden Zone where no one is allowed to go. Zira reminds Cornelius of his theory that apes evolved from man and says that Taylor could be proof of that. But Cornelius refuses to pursue that for fear that the religious leaders of the scientific community such as Zaius will accuse him of heresy. Zira reminds him of the artifacts he found while digging in the Forbidden Zone. But Cornelius argues that the artifacts outdated their religious scrolls which simply could not be. He has clearly been brainwashed by the religious leaders. Sometimes later, Dr. Zaius arrives and notices the paper plane. Zira tells him that it floats in the air but that upsets Zaius, and he crumples it up and throws it on the ground. Later, Taylor is in a cage when he overhears the guard saying that Zaius himself has ordered experimental surgery on his brain. When the guard tries to take him, he fights and runs out. The guards chase him through a market, a temple, and a museum where taxidermized humans are put on display. Dodge is among them. Finally, he is caught, but just then his throat heals and he speaks and it shocks everyone. Next, Taylor is back in the cage with the female whom he names Nova. He is separated from her by the apes, and then he tells her of his life back on Earth. In the process, he teaches her to smile. Dr. Zaius, orangutan superior, arranges for Taylor to be castrated against Zira's protests. Taylor is brought before a committee of religious scientist leaders along with Zira and Cornelius for a hearing. He tries to speak in his defense but isn't allowed to. The committee accuses Zira of experimenting on Taylor's brain and vocal cords and giving him the ability to speak. They also accuse Cornelius of heresy for suggesting that apes evolved from man, because they believed that ape was divinely created by God above all other beings. Both deny these charges and Taylor once again writes down his story for the committee that Cornelius reads out for him. The committee suggests looking at Taylor's companions that he claims came with him. They take him to identify them and he finds Landon. But Landon cannot speak because he's had brain surgery performed on him. This enraged Taylor, but he is once again captured by the apes. Dr. Zayas tells the committee that Landon could never speak, and the surgery was performed to save his life. Cornelius and Zira try to argue their theory of evolution saying that if Taylor is not from another planet, then he is from here, and is the missing link of evolution between man and ape. This is too much for the committee, and they sentence Taylor to be disposed of and accuse Zira and Cornelius of heresy. Taylor is brought before Zaius. Zaius admits that he knew Landon could speak and performed surgery on him to shut him up. He agrees with Cornelius's theory of Taylor being a missing link in evolution. This surprises Taylor. He asks Taylor to tell him the location of more people like him, and promises to spare Taylor's life in return. Taylor is confused and has no answer, but notices that Zaius is scared of him for some reason. Next, Zira's nephew arrives at Taylor's cage and helps him escape. Taylor insists that Nova comes along. Zira and Cornelius tell Taylor that since they are charged with heresy, the only way they can win is by going back to the Forbidden Zone, to Cornelius's diggings and finding proof of their theory. Taylor grabs a gun and agrees to accompany them. They arrive at the cave where Cornelius did the digging, but just as they are about to enter, Zaius and his guards arrive to arrest them. Taylor points a gun at him and tells his guards to back away. 
he proposes a deal to Zaius. If Cornelius and Zira can prove that artifacts older than the religious scrolls exist in the cave, he has to withdraw his case against them. They enter the cave, where Cornelius presents multiple artifacts, and Zaius rejects all of them until they find a human doll that speaks the word Mama. Taylor argues that this doll belonged to an intelligent human house, since an ape would never make a human doll that talked. More guards arrive, but Taylor shuns them away by taking Zaius hostage. When Taylor inquires, Zaius admits to them that he knew about ancient men because the secret religious scrolls mentioned them. They describe men as destructive beasts who wage war on each other. He also reveals that the Forbidden Zone was once a paradise, and men turned it into the barren wasteland it is today. This is why he was scared of Taylor and intelligent men. Taylor is still curious how this planet had apes evolved from men. He demands a horse and some provisions from the guards in return for Zaius, and sets off to find the answer alongside Nova. Zaius warns him saying he might not like what he finds. Then Taylor bids farewell to Zira and Cornelius, and thanks Zira for helping him all the time. After Taylor leaves, Zaius has the cave sealed off and tells Zira and Cornelius they will stand trial for heresy because he cannot let people know about the intelligent men. A little way down the beach, Taylor sees something that makes him leap off his horse crying and cursing. It's the remains of the Statue of Liberty. He realizes he was on Earth the whole time, and humans just destroyed it and themselves thousands of years ago. And now, he has his answer. After that this amazing movie ends here. Thanks for enjoying this video.